Hey guys, welcome back. So today in this video, I'm going to be doing a more in-depth uh, tutorial on disassembling iOS applications, how to understand and read assembly code, and how to actually use that to write a patch or a hack for an iPhone app. So for example, if you have an app on the App Store such as PayPal, a banking app, or a secure payment app, um, a lot of these apps will prevent you from using them if they detect that your device is jailbroken. And the way they do that is various different methods, but they basically check for certain files that will only be installed on a, a jailbroken device. And if they find these files, they basically force you to quit the app and do not allow you to use it. Now, with simple reverse engineering skills, um, using a disassembler and uh, writing a patch in assembly, you can basically get around this um, and allow yourself to use the apps on a jailbroken device. So that's what many of the patches will do on Cydia. But this is basically, in this video, explaining how to write that yourself for an app that maybe doesn't have a patch uh, publicly available. So for the example in this video, we're going to be using an app that is on my GitHub. So this is an open source app. You guys can go ahead and look at the source code for this and download it. It's called Jabric Detection in iOS app. And it's basically just a proof of concept of how to detect if the device is jailbroken. So you want to go and download this application. And I'll quickly show you the source code. You can see here it's a very simple app we have on the main view controller. We have one button. And then this is linked to a method which will basically look inside the root file system and see if cydia.app exists in the slash applications directory. If it does exist, then it will tell you that the device is jailbroken and it will call this danger method, which turns the screen red and basically it doesn't let you do anything else. If it's not jailbroken, if it doesn't find Cydia, then it will display a regular message and allow you to dismiss it. So obviously, uh, not all jailbroken devices would have Cydia installed. So this is not the most accurate way of detecting a jailbreak. There are many other methods out there that more advanced apps would use. But for this example, this should be good enough as a proof of concept of how to patch this. So you want to run this app on your device. So download it through um, on your computer and then run it for Xcode and connect your device. So you can see I have my device right here. And this is obviously jailbroken on iOS 10. And if you can see, we go and open up the app. We have the big button. If we tap this button, you can see it gives us a little alert with no cancel button saying device is jailbroken and the screen turns red as sort of a danger warning thing. So you can't do anything else here. You cannot dismiss this alert. So you're pretty much stuck and you cannot use the app. So what we want to do is we're going to use a disassembler and we're going to write a little patch that's going to allow us to use this app, even though the app, uh, even though the device is jailbroken. So there's a few possible ways you could do this. You could actually debug the app on the device and edit things there by changing the values in the registers or you could even use Cycrypt which I already have a video on on this channel in this playlist that explains how to modify an app during its runtime but for this we're going to be actually writing a patch and then re um, or sort of cloning the application so we have a hacked patched application as well as the regular one so the patched one will allow you to use it on the jailbroken device so to do that we need a decrypted binary of the application now if you're using an app store app which the majority of this will apply to then when the app is installed on your device, um, it's actually encrypted with your unique device's key. So you need to have a decrypted version of the binary. Now you can use something like Clutch from Cydia, which will allow you to decrypt that, or you can download a cracked version already, for an already cracked version, from a website such as iphonecake.com or another piracy website. Um, so we're gonna use, you can just search, for example, PayPal. And although it's a free app, it's still going to be on here because this one we will be decrypted. So you can download this and you have a decrypted binary. There's no point sending over the binary from your device if you do not decrypt it first because you will not be able to, be, you won't be able to reverse engineer it properly. So once you've got your binary, I've got the, the app for the jailbreak detection. You want to extract the binary. So this one here, the executable. And then we're going to use a disassembler to take this apart and produce the assembly code. Now, if you're on a Mac, then I recommend using Hopper because there's a free trial of this and it's a very easy to use disassembler. If you're on Windows and you can use IDA Pro or a demo version of IDA, this is basically the uh, better version of Hopper, but um, the Mac version is a bit limited. Um, or you can use any other disassembler really. You can even use Radari 2 for this, the command line version. But whatever you want to use, we're just going to be using Hopper. So we want to open up Hopper. Now, admittedly, this is actually a cracked Hopper. I don't normally support piracy, but I'm using a cracked hopper because if you use the demo of hopper, you cannot um, export the modified binary. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually modify some assembly code and we need to export it into a new binary. But the demo version won't allow us to do that. So I actually have a cracked version installed at the moment. So you want to drag 
the binary for whatever application you're going to be hacking into the disassembler and it's going to recognize it as a fat archive now what this means is that it's compiled for two instruction sets so you can see the two instruction sets arm v7 and aarc64 now arm v7 is a 32-bit binary meaning it's for 32-bit devices so if this application was launched on a 32-bit device the device would obviously know that it's a 32-bit so it would it would run this binary instead of the 64-bit one if it's run on a 64-bit device then for optimization purposes it will run this one the 64-bit binary could still the 64-bit device could still run the 32-bit binary um, but for optimization purposes it would run this one because it'd be much smoother much faster experience so we're going to disassemble the 64-bit one you can choose whichever one you want to disassemble depending on the device you're using so we're just going to click next and then you can see muck all aarc64 click ok and for some reason that crashed let's try that again all right so this is what you should see you should see the assembly code produced from the binary now if you've watched my videos on ARM Assembly Basics on my second channel or any of the other videos in this uh, playlist on the iOS Hacking Security Research playlist on this channel, then this will be slightly new because I've only demoed 32-bit applications so far and in ARM v7 assembly. Now, 64-bit assembly, 64-bit ARM assembly is slightly different. There are some added instructions, which you probably notice, as well as different register names. Now, the registers are named with X's instead of R's. And there's a lot more of them so other than that it's fairly similar to understand and you don't really need to understand too much of it anyway to be able to do this so as we want to patch the jailbreak detection method we want to first see if there's a standing out sort of jailbreak detection function that just lies within the program now some of the time in more uh, real world applications and more advanced apps you may not find anything that actually mentions a jailbreak it may be named to something slightly different related to that but for this um, video and this example we already know that the method is called jailbreak test method so we can just see that straight away in here so we have view controller jailbreak test method and if we click on this it takes us to the assembly function for this method and we can read through so this is quite a large assembly function and if you don't really understand assembly then I recommend watching my video on my second channel that explains the basics of what assembly is and how it works but we're just going to quickly walk through this to understand what it does so let's pretend we don't have access to the source code uh, we don't really need to understand what's going on here. We're just going to assume this is doing some um, some calculations or something. We don't really need to care about this. What we do need to care about is the branch with links. BL is a branch with link, which means it takes the execution to somewhere else. So when it, it goes through like this, when it gets to this, it will branch with a link to this place here. Now, this happens to be an OBJC message sent. Now, this is what Objective-C reverse, reverse engineering is, a lot, is like because... With a C program, uh, you would branch directly to the address of a function. With Objective C, it's all about using these message send um, things. So it's a little bit more complicated to be able to follow the flow of a program, but um, you should be able to understand this because, and Hopper gives you a nice way of reading this because if you double click this, it shows you where it goes. So you can see we have cross reference equals view controller danger. And that's another function which we have here, the danger function. And from the source code, we already know that when the device is detected as jailbroken, it runs the danger function, which changes the color to red. So we've just understood a bit of the program just by looking at that assembly. So what we want to do is basically do nothing if the device is detected as jailbroken. If you're disassembling the 32-bit version of the binary, so using a 32-bit device, then you can actually use this button up here in Hopper, which will basically produce you the pseudocode um, equivalent of this assembly code. Now what pseudocode is, is basically where this program will guess which what the source code looked like before it was compiled. So you'd get something similar to this. Now it wouldn't be exactly the same because of the fact that the compiler would do optimizations on it. So you can never get the exact source code, but you could get something that looks more like this than the assembly instruction. So I hope you understand the program a little bit better if you use this function, but on 64-bit you can see it's not supported, so we cannot do that but we can still use these comments that Hopper gives us. So these comments are very useful. You can see the little at selector and then inside the brackets is the name of the method that's about to be called by the next OBJC message sent. So you can see this, the address of the method is being put into this register and then it's called when this is uh, branched with link to. So if we look through, we can see that um, the, the check is here for the file in slide of applications. And then after that, we get 
the message um, saying that the device is jailbroken. And we know that this is placed onto the alert because we've already looked at the app and the alert displays this exact message. So we know that the, uh, the method for the message to show up must be quite near. And if we look down, you can see that it's right here, selector show. Show is the method on the UI alert view, which displays it on the screen, basically. Now, we don't want this to happen because this prevents us from doing anything else with the app, as there's no cancel button. So this alert sort of just stays on the screen and it's there forever. We also underneath that, you can see the danger functions also called. So what we want to do really is just basically stop these functions from ever being called. And we know that they're being called by this branch with link to OBJC message send and this one here. So we basically just want to get rid of these. Now what we can use is something called a NOP instruction. And a NOP instruction is basically an instruction that just does nothing. Now one of them is actually here. You can see this NOP. When the CPU is executing this program, it will step through all these instructions and do all the calculations. When it gets to a NOP, basically just steps over as if nothing is there. So to prevent these functions from ever being called, we can just replace this instruction with a NOP. And that way when the CPU is executing it, even if it does detect the device as jailbroken, which it will because of the checks up here, it just won't do anything. It will just NOP over them and these will not exist. So the application will basically just run as it normally would. So to replace these instructions, you want to highlight it and then go up to modify. And you can see this NOP region button. Click on that and it just replaces it with a NOP. You can see there it's now gone. So there's no branch to the show function. So right now, if it detects it as jailbroken, no alert will show. The, uh, the, the screen will still turn red because of this danger function. But we're going to get rid of that as well now. So let's highlight this one and do the same thing. Modify NOP region. And there you go, NOP. So we've knocked both of these out. So now basically nothing's going to happen if it does detect it as jailbroken. So that's pretty much all there is to it to patch in this application. Now more advanced applications will probably require more advanced patches. It won't be as simple as uh, replacing one instruction with a NOP. And there's probably different ways you could have done this. Now if you still wanted the device to, um, if you still wanted this function to work as it, as it normally would, uh, but you still didn't want the danger function to be called, what you could do is inside of the danger function is just NOP out the whole thing. So you could select the whole uh, this whole section, modify NOP region, and you just get a whole function of NOPs, which basically just means it will do nothing when this function is called. So that is pretty much our patch done. Now to actually use this on the device, we need to create the new executable. So this is why we need the paid version of Hopper or a cracked version. So go up to File, Produce New Executable, and it will save this on the desktop. We'll just call it Jailbreak Detection Patched, and then save that. And you'll see the new executable right here. So to get this installed on your device, you can either uh, replace the default one, the default executable in the normal app, or you can create a cloned version of the app. That way you can have two versions of the app installed on the device, the hacked one and the regular version. Uh, but we're just going to do the normal one. So we want to get rid of the uh, default executable. We don't need that anymore. And you want to make sure that your hacked or patched executable is renamed to the same as the default one. So get rid of the patched thing that I just put on. So now it's called Jarek Detection. Now you want to open up the .app, show package contents, and you want to drag in the patched executable, which should ask you to replace the normal one. So now the patch is installed inside the app. And we just need to create an IPA that we can basically install on the device. So to create an IPA, it's very simple. Just create a new folder called payload with a capital P. Drag the .app into the payload folder. Right click on it and then click on compress. And this will give you a new zip file or zip folder. And we want to just rename this, including the .zip extension to my app. IPA and then use IPA and there you go the IPA is built so you can chuck away the payload folder you have your patched app now so we can install this um, with Cydia Impactor or any other method that you want to install the app onto the device so I've just installed the hacked version of the app onto the device using Cydia Impactor and now what you can see is when we open the app we still have the button but when we click the button nothing happens the button basically just acts as if it doesn't do anything so we don't get any kind of red background or any kind of alert view that prevents us from using the app so uh, yeah that is basically the simplest form of uh, patching a jailbreak detection now in a more real world situation such as an app like PayPal or another banking app um, you may not do it as simply as this you might need to instead of just disabling these functions or putting a knob instead of them you may want to actually um, change them so that they instead of calling the functions associated with the jailbroken device they call the function associated with the non jailbroken device and that way you're sort of working your way around it so it will vary between applications and it will be a little bit harder in real world situations 
but that is basically the foundation of it so hopefully with this knowledge you've learned something and from this you can build a real patch for a real app in the future so if you guys have any questions about this then leave a comment down below if you want to learn more about ios hacking and security research then check out the playlist on this channel there are seven videos in this playlist now and um, there'll be much more coming in the future so i'll leave a link to this in the description also check out my second channel a link will also be in the description for more advanced tutorials like this one but yeah so that's it thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe for more and i will see you next time